Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, we're going to answer a question about, not about coffee, but maybe about coffee and how I make videos about coffee. So Jordan has a question. Hey, Meg, do you have any tips on being on camera? I want to progress my YouTube and not always having uh, no talking videos. So I did tests this week, but felt really awkward. Um, normal. It's a different beast having the camera pointed at you. I have loads to talk about, but was struggling to say anything. Upon a quick Google, I was surprised how many script slash bullet point their videos, especially in the beginning. I imagine you're just free flow. I might just film myself every day for 10 minutes for a month, just myself, hopefully to improve. Great tip. I don't think I read that first. <laughs> I know you can always edit out the pauses and awkwardness. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I gave you some tips here. So before I get into these tips, I wanted to um, just kind of share about the awkwardness. It's normal, you know that, but how do we just move past it? Well, um, practice, 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 practice. So I'll give you some context on how and why I got on camera. I came from a media background and I had been um, making podcasts since like 2012 and getting on camera and moving through my awkwardness. And so I was at a point where I felt very comfortable. So I had an advantage there. Uh, but it shouldn't stop you from, if you do feel awkward, just know that I still feel awkward sometimes. Okay, so I'll go through kind of like my process and show you that I still feel some of the very human things that a beginner would feel getting on camera and that I find ways to do it anyway, move through it, okay? It's good to motivate yourself while you're doing this very non-natural thing. So I'm just going to kind of uh, give you some tips. And I'll show you really quick here, uh, George. I have my notes here in front of me. So you were talking about bullets. Yeah, I, I make little bullets or I just free throw, free flow <laughs> uh, notes in a notepad. And often this is really helpful when I'm here at the desktop and I can just kind of look at my notes and talk to you as if you're right here next to me. Okay. So I'll take that off. Um, yeah, it's good to motivate yourself while you're doing this very non-natural thing. So those who have an aversion to this probably will never find their way here, but those who are um, curious enough to go and make video like you, Jord, just keep reminding yourself why you're doing it. You know, like, you know, this is good for me. This is, um, I like it. I like this world of being on camera and talking and making content. And in the end, it's helping me. You know, uh, it's possibly helping me sell coffee. And if and if I just keep at it and practice, um, I'll get to a better place. I'm always going to improve if I just keep going. Okay. So um, I'll share some things of what I do and did to get comfortable and feel um, when I'm on camera to feel more off the cuff. So it depends. Like if I'm trying to answer a question like I am right now. I definitely want to take time and answer it thoroughly. So I'll make bullet points. So I want to cover it and answer it as thoroughly as possible. And so that's when I'll actually use notes. Now, when I'm down in the coffee lab, cupping, um, talking to you like that, standing up, being a little bit more um, engaging. This is kind of more intimate right here in front of the, the camera like this in front of the mic. Um, I can be a little bit more animated off the cuff, rant a little bit more. Okay. Um, so yeah, two different styles. We'll talk about styles later. So, uh, I typically have a topic in mind when I approach a video or vlog and I, I kind of have in my mind what I want to say about it. I don't have a full list of bullet points yet. And if I feel like it's going off more than maybe two or three points, I'll, I'll go to the notepad and write them down. Okay. Cause I may, sometimes I think of things Lightning strikes me in the shower and I'm like, oh, I want to talk about that. And uh, I might forget it. So I'll quickly go to my notepad on the phone, on the desktop, write it down. Okay. And um, when I'm making these videos, I really just try to let, let go of how I sound, how I look. Um, 
as much as possible, as much as humanly possible. Um, but definitely I, I try not to worry about how I sound because I can edit it. Now, if I really don't like it, I can hit stop and hit record again and just start again. And I won't take the time to delete it or anything like that if I have uh, a large memory card, right? So like technical stuff come into play, but I'll just stop, hit record again. I'm like, all right, take two, let's go. Because <laughs> sometimes that's that'll still happen today, currently. I'll be talking. I probably haven't really um, gathered my thoughts about a certain topic. And so I'm just kind of feel like I'm forcing it. And then I'll, I'll hit stop. I'll take a breath. I'll think about what I said and be like, what's a better way to say this? And then I'll hit record and then try it again. And you know, um, that, that typically happens when I haven't made a video in a while. Okay. And, uh, I forgive myself for that. Right. I'll just be like, I just won't even let that bother me. <laughs> Whereas maybe before when I was first starting, that would, that would kind of, uh, irk me a little bit. Okay. Um, and sometimes even if I don't like what I just said, I'll just keep talking. I'll say it again. I'll give myself another take without cutting, without stopping recording. Cause maybe it's just a small little sentence. So I'll pause and I'm like, there's a better way to say that. I'll say it again and I'll kind of like envision and listen to what I'm saying so that I can imagine what the audience may be hearing. And I'll be like, yeah, that sounds better. And then keep going. And that all will become faster that all that thinking would become faster and more second nature, um, not so weird and jarring as you keep doing it. And uh, yeah, again, you can always edit that out. So just make a mental note or a little, if you, if you know what the timestamp is, write down the timestamp, make it faster. So a lot of the time you'll make all of your decisions in post. So when you're making a video, a lot of people would feel pressure there. You're making the video, you hit record, ah, but actually, you don't really need to do that because it hasn't gone public yet. <laughs> so I think if you, if you really realize that you haven't hit publish yet, um, there's no really, there's no uh, logical reason to freak out. You haven't, you haven't hit publish yet, okay? So you can always delete it if you really wanted to. So most of the decisions are made on the editing table, on the cutting floor, as they say. So when you're not a pro, you know, allow yourself to find your voice. And the only way to do that, again, is with a lot of practice and allowing yourself to fail forward. Right. Um, it's also helpful to mentally let go of perfection when you're first starting out, like be forgiving, like just you hear this a lot before uh, in the big entrepreneur rush was like, fail forward, embrace the suck. Your first couple videos are going to suck. <laughs> and in 2012, when I was making content, I embraced that. I was like, all right, let's go for it. And uh, they were awful. And I didn't care. And I was really trying my best. But if I were to watch them now, I would really probably cringe. And I wouldn't want to see that right now. But uh, it doesn't matter. There's billions and billions upon billions of content out there. Nobody cares <laughs> about your old videos. So if you, the more that you do now and you just keep moving forward, the more you can put those suckier videos behind you. <laughs> and it's anybody who's made content will just have a folder of those stashed away. All right. Um, so if you have the perspective that um, also too, like this is your opinion, your perspective, you're sharing your experience. Hey, in that way, you're never wrong. So there's no pressure to feel like uh, you have to be right or perfect. Um, and I always, that's what I do. That's my strategy is like, hey, I'm making this observation, specifically when I talk about coffee, right? It's, it's another thing if we talk about some other subject, but we're talking about vlogging about coffee. So it's really easy for me to go, that's the coffee. That's what it's doing. And I'm its humble guide and host. <laughs> so don't get mad at me if I say something wrong or whatever. I'm just making an observation and I'm telling you what uh, my experience and my anecdotal um, experience is. Okay. So scripting versus off the cuff versus bullet points. Um, 
all of those styles and methods of making content, um, you'll probably use them at some point if you make content for long enough. I've used all of those methods. And um, after a while, you will develop your own style in making content. You know, just like you have your own style in roasting coffee, you'll develop that too with making content. Funny, see how coffee mirrors life? <laughs> it's very cool. Um, okay, so scripting, okay, this is usually appropriate for when you're spouting facts or when you want to inform uh, people about something and you don't want to misinform somebody. And this is always sketchy because these facts in coffee can change. <laughs> So I, I really try to stay away for that, stay away from that, or I communicate like at this time, currently at this time, this is what the literature says. You know, I will find ways um, in saying things that allow some margin of error, allow some forgiveness, and you know, don't shoot the messenger, basically. Okay. Uh, bullet points. I love bullet points or just little short sentences to kind of get me going like I'm doing exactly right now. I have little sentences to help me guide me through this, um, this video. So uh, bullet points guide you and you feel okay to just like take those points into your, you know, expanded dialogue. And whenever people ask me questions, I answer them just like this, I mentioned this before, but I'm just kind of like parroting my notes here. I bullet my thoughts and it's really just to help me cover everything that I was thinking of. And I won't, I won't get everything, you know? So I'll, I'll always be like, at this time, this is what I think, <laughs> you know? And um, being that I do a lot of like email communication and I really try to be very clear and concise and not try to get myself in hot water, I'm I, uh, I do that in my real job. So it's something that I take and get to practice on in making content too. So it's a win-win. Um, I'll also try to add that, you know, again, it's my opinion, anecdotal experience, et cetera. Um, and I always try to encourage my audience to learn how to fish versus just giving them the fish, you know? So I think in terms of coffee and we're talking about vlogging about coffee or making videos about coffee, um, I think that's a, that's always a healthy way about making content, you know? So we don't become tyrants and we keep passing the torch along. And I think that's uh, a community that we want to be a part of when we make content for sure. That's just, again, my personal experience. You can always do whatever you want to do. Okay. Um, okay. Another thing, scripting should still sound like you if possible. So I rant just as much as the next person, but I do listen back to everything uh, in the editing room. I, I hear myself, I hear my own voice. And uh, at first I did not like that. <laughs> I did not like the sound of my voice. And I actually think it has shaped the way that I present myself because I, I want to be proud and represent who I really feel I am on the inside and I want that to be reflected on the outside and so even the way the tone of my voice is also different when I make videos versus like if you talk to me in real person my voice tone goes up because I'm excited and I want to show you that I'm genuinely excited but then it's so weird it's just a part of my like content persona it's this voice it's a little deeper it's a little bit more I don't know it's my persona. <laughs> it's still me. Uh, but obviously, it's just a little different. It's like a little turned on me, I guess. That's how I used to say it. I'm a little, a little more turned on, like on air. You know what I mean? Uh, like I said, I do listen back to everything I say to help filter as much yammering as possible. You know, I, I, I watch a lot of YouTube, so I do find it annoying if I'm hearing your life story for five minutes before I get it to... Uh, what the video is about. So I, I do really try to just get to the point in the beginning, you know, and then if I do start to yammer later on in the video, at least it's later on in the video, you know, and I, I felt like I haven't wasted your time. So that's, that's my perspective again, too. Okay. Take pauses like I do. I can really get breathy when I talk and lose my breath when I talk. It's an issue. It's a definite issue. When I used to public speak, I would get so breathy that 
my, I would literally just like my voice, my throat would be so dry from the nervous, hyped excitedness. I hated that feeling where I couldn't even talk. And I was, you could just hear my voice crack the whole time. So when you're first speaking on camera, it could feel that way. So take a breath, take a pause, take as many breaths as you like. There's so much power in the breath. Um, and take your time, okay? Because remember, all the, all the like editing, because remember, you haven't hit publish. And just right there, I just let you see what a mistake looks like, okay? So <laughs> that would be a mistake that I would cut out and I would just cut to. I'm going to leave it there so, Joy, you could see what I do, okay? Take your time, take a breath, and start again because you haven't hit publish yet and all of the edits are made on the cutting floor or how, like we say, you know, it's made in post. The content's made in post. So... I didn't want to use that jargon because obviously people don't, I don't really use that jargon here. So now you know, it's made in post, right? All right, we're getting to the end here. All right, <laughs> and then I'll move over to my tips. Last thing, different kinds of videos will lend itself to um, different kind of corresponding styles. For example, like this, like I said, I'm here, this is a little bit more intimate, in front of the mic, in front of the screen here, and we're reacting to something and we're answering your question, a little bit more intimate, right? versus me standing up, moving around in the coffee lab versus roasting, okay? Different styles. So you'll develop different styles. And um, you don't need to follow me, all right, at all. But I would say it would help you to be conscious that, hey, maybe I could have a different style here when I do this type of video or a different style here when I do this kind of video. And if you're conscious of it, you can get better at it quicker, okay? All right, tips. Tips, 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 tips. Um, I already mentioned this to you, but if the camera is daunting, all right, put it far away. And then if you can, if you have some sort of zoom feature, then you can kind of zoom up. Now, yes, the quality will degrade. But again, this is getting you to be comfortable with the camera. So you don't have to hit publish, but you can record yourself and record and practice you being on camera and how your mannerisms are, how your tone is, uh, your word choice, the persona that you are beginning to develop. So you can try that, okay? Um, two, you can do voiceovers. I think I mentioned this to you before, but say we do this kind of style video, right? Talking, but then I don't show my face. So all I have to do is this, okay? So I'm talking, talking, and I can take myself out and we can kind of do things on the screen or I could show you my roast profile, things like that, okay? And I can move my mouse around. Can you see my mouse? No, you can't. So you'll have to find out how to make your mouse visible. Uh, but yeah, okay? So I'm back. Number three, tone and speaking and sounding natural and off the cuff. I like to imagine I'm talking to a friend and that was helpful in the beginning. Now, the camera is indeed my friend. Or I'm thinking about you, George. If you ask me a question, I'm thinking about you. You know, I have you in my head. And now that um, I actually know what you look like, now I can picture you even more. <laughs> and even when you guys don't send me a picture or I don't like look up who you are, which I usually don't, I just have your screen name. I'm imagining you. I'm just like, I put, you know, you're like a, f a floating little screen name, but I see you as a little, as a human and I'm talking to you. Um, and I'm talking to that one person, you know? Uh, and that's, that helps me, you know? Um, number four, not too many people are gonna watch in the beginning anyway. So chill out, relax, no pressure the best time to make mistakes. It's the best time to change things. It's the best time to be like, oh, I'm going to try this style now. You know, all of the advice, the generic advice you, advice you hear about getting started is true. 
All of it's true. And you just have to pick one. And you just have to do it, you know. And uh, a lot of people say that too. You just have to do it. No, oh, you know. <laughs> I'll say it to you too, you know. I'll parrot the same thing because it's true. Um, nowadays, you know, a forced happy demeanor is cringe. So before in the vlog uh, and content creating world, there was like, sup guys, a uh, sort of forced happy demeanor. Now, am I forcing myself to be happy? No, I think I, I just show up the way I want to show up. If I have a little bit more energy than yesterday, so be it. But uh, I am the filter, you know, I'm the boss of my emotions that day. And I'll often find that when I start a video, if I wasn't in the most hype mood and I'm doing it, you know, you'll find that by like <laughs> the 17th minute, I'm much more hype. I see that. I observe that in my videos. I'm like, see, this is why coffee's dope. You know, it, it always heightens my mood. You know, it always makes me happier. Um, but allow yourself to do that. I would say, I would say, allow yourself to be you in, in the way that you want to do that. You know, there's no wrong way for you, whatever you want to do and whatever direction you feel is right for you. I want you to do that. You have permission to do that. You didn't need my permission, but I'm just reminding you. Okay. <laughs> Cause sometimes we need to be reminded and, uh, you will develop an on-camera persona, like I was talking about. And yeah, I have a persona right now. Uh, it's a little bit more turned on. And I'm hitting that, what, what, uh, what's my time here? Mm, 22 minutes. I'm getting into my flow state. When I hit that like 30 minute mark, I'm really flowing. I'm like, you better stop this camera or I will not stop. <laughs> uh, but that's what I love about it. Just try to keep it 100, okay? Keep it real. Be genuine. Be you. Um, last tip that I can think of right now, because it will not be complete. It will always change. I try not to focus too much on myself. I always try to make it about the coffee. Um, I think I said that already. I am just a guide, a host. And if I fail at that, if I do start being a little too personable or or interjecting my own like personal beliefs and stuff and it's not related to coffee. Um, I don't know. I'm human. <laughs> if I fail, at least I'm trying. I'm trying not to do that. But sometimes, you know, my personality comes through. Um, but yeah. Okay. So those are my tips. There's technical stuff. I don't think that matters much, like what kind of camera you use and all that stuff and what kind of mic you have and all the quality of your equipment. I think I've said this to you. It doesn't matter in the end. It's really like how you present the content. You know, is your message getting across even? Is the, is the goal that you set out to accomplish being accomplished? Have fun with the equipment. Don't let it stop you. Go crazy with it. I think that's that's something that's nice little carrot. Uh, but in the end, it will be all about how you present the information and if you're actually doing what you set out to do. Okay. I did not cover everything, I'm sure. But, you know. <laughs> Tips for being on camera. I hope that helped, Jord. All right. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.